One of the most widely spread opinions on the internet these days amongst filmmakers and photographers is that gear doesn't matter. I 100% disagree with this statement and in this video I'm going to talk about exactly why that is and I think why gear actually really does matter in being a creative with a camera. This is something I've wanted to experience for so long. It's probably quite creepy when you think about it, but try not to think about that. If you're new to the channel, my name's Rick. I'm a filmmaker and photographer from the UK, and I'm out in the Peak District today on what has been an absolutely incredible day, really, of fog that you can see around me. It isn't quite as good as it was earlier, but I've been out for six hours, and I've only just got around to making this video now, so, it's just been an incredible day where I've been focused on photography. And if you stick around till a little bit later, I'll show you some of the images I've got and how it ties in a little bit with me talking about why I think gear is important. As a photographer and filmmaker, one of the most exciting things to me about this is the gear we can get our hands on. The stuff we can use to create amazing images and videos now is just absolutely mind blowing compared to even just 10 years ago. Everything available to us now is just so so good and I can see how people get carried away with needing the best gear all the time and there is an argument to say yeah you don't need the best gear all the time but having the best gear or having the best gear that you can afford is absolutely going to help you in your journey to becoming a better photographer or a better filmmaker. Now I should probably say when I talk about gear I'm really mainly talking about cameras and lenses. Obviously we can spend more money on every facet of photography and filmmaking equipment. Every little thing that we spend money on and we buy the better thing of is overall probably going to make things easier. So what do I mean by better gear? Well it generally is the more top of the range line of stuff, the cameras and lenses with the weather sealing, the in-body image stabilisation, the lens stabilisation, the better quality higher megapixel sensors with greater dynamic range. So how can this help photographers and filmmakers? Well, it can give you confidence to go out in all kinds of weather conditions. If you've got a camera that maybe you're worried about water getting into it because it's not weather sealing, you're not going to go out in the conditions where you're going to get shots that need you to be out in those conditions. I'll show an image now of, of a shot I got in Snowdonia and if I hadn't had a weather sealed camera here I probably wouldn't have gone out so having that weather sealed camera enabled me to get that shot. That was all about the gear. Higher dynamic range means we don't have to worry about bracketing so many shots and maybe that means we can hand hold more shots in photography. Image stabilisation, again, it allows you to shoot more freer without having to use a tripod all the time and it allows you to get handheld shots if you're, if you're filmmaking that you might not necessarily be able to before. I think one of the most important things is just ergonomics. The more expensive cameras, the, the research and development that the manufacturers put into the ergonomics of these cameras, making sure it feels good in your hand and is easy to operate and has a good layout, None of that's done by accident, it's so that you can spend more time shooting and enjoy your shooting and your camera almost becomes a part of you because you're so used to using it. I think what all of these factors contribute to overall is increased confidence and freeing your mind. If you're not worrying about what you're using to shoot with, if you're solely focused on the photography, the filmmaking side of it, and you're immersed in that creative activity, then you're going to produce better work. So therefore, having the best gear is completely freeing in that sense. I honestly don't know where I'm going here. Never been here in my life. It's a straight path from car to up here and I don't know where it's going to take me, which is kind of exciting really, but it's just a bit boring at the moment. Can't see enough fog, that's the problem. I'm not sure if I talked about resilience or not before, but generally more expensive gear is made better. And I promise this wasn't intended, but I've just dropped my camera off my tripod, the one I'm using right now, and it's fallen face first into the floor. And I think it still works. I have taken a chunk out of my lens though. 
which isn't ideal. I'll just try and show you what I've done. There you go. Nice big piece missing. But I think it's working okay. And that's just a testament to how well made these more expensive pieces of equipment are. Hopefully no more incidents. In a future video, I'll probably talk about the importance of planning your route. Because at the moment, I'm basically in a tunnel of Christmas trees. And I've not quite got any views that I was hoping for. At least I know where to come and get a Christmas tree next month though. I don't condone cutting down Christmas trees. I always buy my Christmas tree from a reputable Christmas tree dealer. At least I think they're reputable. Yes, here we go. This is more what I was after. Okay, that walk has absolutely paid off because this, it's like, something out of a movie. I can't even explain it. It's creepy as anything. It's like the Forbidden Forest in the Harry Potter films or something like that. But this, there's no one here. It's completely silent. And this is, I'll be totally honest, this is something I've wanted to experience for so long. I need to show you. Look at uh, how amazing this is. Honestly, this is just incredible. I feel like I need to whisper. There's no one about at all, but it's so peaceful and eerie at the same time. What an incredible place. I'm a bit blown away with it, to be honest. I've completely forgotten what this video is about. I'll get back onto that in a minute, but I just kind of want to take this in. I'm slightly concerned now that I've not given myself anywhere near enough time. So I'm going <laughs> to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep shooting as much as I can. I've only got one tripod, which doesn't help. But I'm going to keep shooting. I'm going to get back to what I was talking about, which is gear. And here, it probably doesn't matter. These are pretty benign conditions. And that's the flip side of it. If you have the opinion that gear doesn't really matter, you could look at conditions like this and completely agree with that because i mean look at it it's just perfect it's completely still it's not freezing the dynamic range everything else is manageable it's low light yes so image stabilization helps but you'd be better off using a tripod so in this situation gear doesn't matter what's most important about this situation is getting out in the right conditions we don't get these conditions very often so i feel so grateful to be out in it today but there's a few other things as well that you could potentially look at doing to improve your filmmaking, your photography before you invest in gear, which is the counter side of the argument. I know I've said gear does matter. I know I'm saying you can do other things. Much like with everything, there is, there's a happy medium, but gear still matters. Yeah, pretty wet bum on it. In photography and filmmaking, there's no substitution for learning. Gear is not a substitution for learning. There's no substitution for not only learning the craft, but learning your camera as well, and how, how that works so you can make the most of it when you're out and about. 
There's no substitution for learning about the weather and the seasons and locations. I know I didn't plan this properly at all. I knew these forests were here. I wasn't sure how to get here. I looked out a little bit, but there's no substitution for planning your location and planning how the light interacts with the land, knowing where the sun rises, where the sun sets, the times you need to be in those locations. And this isn't just for people shooting landscapes. This is for shooting portraits when you want to make the most of that golden light, for shooting films when you need the light to be a particular way. If you look at any kind of Hollywood film, you will notice that outdoors, I'd say probably 75, maybe higher percent of the shots are shot at golden hour or blue hour when you've got that lovely light coming in. So you need to know when that light is going to be like that in the location you want to go to. There's no substitution for learning editing. Gear is not going to make you better at any of those things. So it is a toss up. It is absolutely a toss up, but without good gear, in my opinion, you aren't going to reach the heights. But just paying attention to those things, that's not enough either. And that's why gear is important, because you need it to free yourself, to be able to create the best work you can when applying all those other factors as well. I think I've got an hour now till it goes dark. So I'm gonna try and get some more shots here. Then I'm gonna wrap up this pretty disjointed video. It's been so long since I've made a video out and about and I'm a bit rusty, so I apologize for that, but I hope the message of this video has come across well. This has been one of the most peaceful yet eerie photography experiences I've ever had. I've not seen a single other person since I left the car. It's just, it's really weird, but really good as well. It's probably quite creepy when you think about it, but try not to think about that. Um, is your classic horror film, Forest, basically. Um, and I'm happily just marching around it, taking pictures of whatever takes my fancy. I'm blaming this forest for this video. This video was supposed to follow a very different track than it did. And weirdly, the conditions have quietened me down. Not that I'm a loud person, but I feel like I've spoken really kind of in quite a somber way, just because of how all kind of consuming and enveloping this fog and this forest is. It's an awesome experience. No doubt the pictures I've taken haven't done it justice at all, because I'm trying to do too many things at once. And I have now been out on my feet. I left the house, I don't know, nine hours ago. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a full on day, but I think I've got so many images. Now I said, earlier that I was going to show you some pictures before. I met up with Nigel Danson earlier this morning, went to Padley Gorge, and I'm going to show some of the images I took now. This is another classic example of just getting out in the right conditions. And also, I guess, it's, it's the learning element as well. I've learned so much from Nigel, from working with him for the past few years and watching his YouTube videos as well. And I think if people are interested, I'm going to do a video about how I came to be working with Nigel Danson and how that kind of working relationship's grown. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. I'd also really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Apologies, it's been skidding a little bit all over the place. But I wanna leave you with this, and I think this is quite a good thing to think about. Great photographers and filmmakers will create great work using even the most basic of gear. That's how good they are. But beginner photographers won't create great work with amazing gear. And most of us, I think, sit in the middle. And when you sit in the middle, great gear will certainly help in your creative pursuits. But it's far from everything. And I know, as well as everyone else, that by just buying better gear, I'm not going to become 
necessarily a much better filmmaker or photographer. I've got to learn along the way. I've got to get out in conditions like this, in the rain, in the wind, and I've got to put my gear through it because that is what it's made to do. Don't be afraid to, to kind of push these things. That's what they're built for. That's what we pay the money for. A lot of people, I think, spend three, four thousand pounds on a camera and then treat it like a three or four thousand pound ornament. These things are robust, they're resilient, and they're designed to be put through the mill. Do that with your gear. I promise you, you will make better photos and you will also create better videos as well. Thanks for watching, appreciate each and every one of you that does so. Until next time.